Tom Ray, a John Maxwell Certified Leadership Coach. Welcome to Life, Love, and Leadership, where we discuss everything pertaining to life, love, and leadership. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Life, Love, and Leadership. I'm Tom Ray, and joining with me on the line once again is my co-host, Ken Shelton. Hey, Ken. Hey, Tom. And hey, everyone that's uh, listening, looking, seeing us. We're glad you've tuned in today. Absolutely. Uh, so, so what's the weather like for you today? <laughs> Ooh, it is uh, gray and uh, a little damp, but it's not terribly cold. How about you? Uh, a little bit of the same. Um, I look out my window right in front of me here, and it's just uh, gray and kind of gloomy. So I think we've got to tap into what is bright and shiny on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, the weather's going to change, so we'll just try to stay consistent. And that sounds good. Right now, we're going to do the attitude of gratitude. We're going to talk for a few minutes about the thing that we're grateful for. And the thing that I am grateful for today are close friends. Now, mm -hmm. we have friends. We have levels of relationship. You know, I know idealistically we treat everybody exactly the same, but we all know that that's not true. We have people that uh, we enjoy being around and people that we don't enjoy being around. But beyond that, we have people that are connected to our soul deep inside with whom we can share our deep secrets, uh, depend on them. They'll depend on us. It is a reciprocal friendship. And so uh, that is my attitude of gratitude today. I am grateful and I feel like a very rich man because I have several really great friends that I could share my heart with. And first of all, they would keep it to themselves. And that's a big deal in a world that loves to gossip. And second of all, they would never bring it up again. And finally, they uh, would always be ready for me and I for them if something needed to transpire for the sake of counsel or encouragement. Somehow that sounds like the Bible. And so that's, I guess, why I like it so much. Uh, my uh, attitude of gratitude today is about life. I'm thankful for life. Uh, you know, life is a roller coaster. <laughs> It has its ups and its downs, and sometimes you can find yourself uh, in the downs a little longer than you'd like to be. And so you've got, you've got to put your, your focus and your hopes on the next horizon uh, that, uh, as you said just a moment ago in re reference to the weather, that it's, the sun is going to shine again. And uh, so I'm thankful for life. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, rough seasons that can come into a person's life, but um, all of it is not bad. And, right. and thankful for the 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 ups and the downs because when the ups come, it makes me appreciate the downs. And well, you know, there's one, uh, two things that will occur on a roller coaster that you can count on if you stay on long enough. One, you'll laugh, and two, you'll vomit. And so. <laughs> You know, if you stay on the roller coaster of life long enough, you will barf or you will laugh or both of those at the same time. <laughs> so it's all a good time. <laughs> Whatever. As long as you're not the one that has to clean it up, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as our old friend Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You know, right. know what you're going to get, right? That's absolutely right. But they're all tasty. <laughs> they're all tasty. <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about giving, Tom. We're going to talk about this whole season of giving, but we're not going to do it in a cheesy way. And let me describe what I mean by cheesy way. You know, it's so easy to be cheesy. <laughs> See, I just did it. Yeah. It's so easy to fall into these cliche uh, phrases, words, ideas. Jesus is the reason for the season. You know, the things that we say because, well, quite honestly, we don't know what else to say. So we pick up a slogan or an epitaph. So for us today, we want to just talk honestly about giving, what it means to be a giving person, uh, what the basis of giving is, and how it is expressed. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Our information today is going to be taken from... Um, a website which we will leave the link in the description of this podcast, but it's from Mark 
Sanborn.com. Uh, he is a, a leader as well in the industry. Um, he puts this quote, and I think this is really good. Um, Everything I have, my life, my potential, my time was given to me. I've decided to spend the rest of my life returning. Charlie Jones uh, is who said that. And, and so we're going to tap in and dive into the six principles of giving um, and why people give of themselves. So would you like to start us off today, Ken? So giving number one in this particular resource today that we want to talk about is that giving teaches us to look beyond ourselves. And, you know, having a, a mission, um, having a, a calling or being involved in something that is greater than you is uh, the, really the key to being a decent human being. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that my wife and I had three daughters. I'm grateful that they're raised. I'm grateful that they're in the world, but I'm really grateful that they're good people and that they're good citizens. Yeah. Uh, I spent a lot of money raising my family, but you know what? Uh, it is my single greatest investment and they're good people. They will do good things and they will give. They're generous. And so, um, you know, because they have a sense that they belong to something that is greater than themselves, whether it's a mission, say, you know, a church or a civic group, or uh, some people get involved in the political system for that very reason, because politics, while in some circles has a dirty word, is a dirty word and has a dirty connotation, uh, politics is necessary and it's very important. And the core idea of politics is being able to compromise so that you come up with solutions for everyone. And that's a huge task. It'll always be with us. And uh, so understanding that you are part of a world that is bigger than you and a system that is bigger than you is a great thing. In other words, don't hide from the realities that you're going to have to get involved. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, and I, I think that we need to be active in the world uh, around us because you, you see a lot of people that are all about the receiving, but never about the giving. Right. And uh, who do you want to be around? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the other thing is, is that uh, this whole concept of, I'll use myself for an example, of me being involved in something that is bigger than myself is really the idea of a microcosm. For me, uh, I understand that I am part of something bigger than me on a very basic level today. It's me and you, and, and we're together in this uh, podcast in which we're communicating. It's bigger, and it includes all the people that are watching. But I'm involved in a variety of issues that are larger than myself. Um, I sang this weekend at uh, Cornerstone Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Uh, this week, I'll sing at the St. Patrick's Catholic Parish. Uh, I am neither Presbyterian nor Catholic, but I'll go there because I have friends that go there and they needed my talents. And so I said, yes, I would be, um, I wouldn't be a very nice person if I said no because of church differences, mm -hmm. just to not share the talent to the bigger group of people, but it's a microcosm in that uh, the reason I believe in God, the reason I believe in who he is and, and his truth is because in this world, I have to believe there's something greater than humanity. Mm -hmm. Humanity isn't the beginning and the end of everything. You know, we, we have to have a greater concept. So anyway. Right. Uh, let's jump into two, which is similar to what you were talking about uh, with number one. But number two is giving teaches us to be um, to be of greater service in helping others. Mm -hmm. And so uh, and I like what the, he puts here that giving is an art that requires practice. So we have to do it continually. Even the scripture, I believe, is says be a cheerful giver. Right. Yeah. God and, love you, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that is so very important for us to be from that perspective of life, to be a cheerful giver. I don't know if you've been able to see these these TikTok videos or whatever they are, these short videos of these uh, people that um, 
you know, someone will go up to them and say, hey, will you help me buy this object for, you know, a dollar or whatever it is. And that person gives them a dollar and they turn around and give the dollar back to them and say, hey, I was just looking for the first person to help me. Here's five hundred or a thousand dollars. And then they ask, why did you help me? You know, and, and you're going to find that there, there's people that don't help, but those that do say, well, I think we should help whenever we're given an opportunity. And, and so I think that's the heart to have. Um, a lot of us get caught up in the weeds sometimes of, of what that person is going to do with what we've given them. And, and it's just a kind of a human response. But um, I think we always need to be in the perspective of giving. Well, you know, let's talk about what you just said. Uh, very often, uh, we see uh, somebody going into, as we go into the football or baseball game, they're on the street corner and they're, you know, they've got their little bucket out and they want a donation or they're uh, at the intersection coming off the freeway and they're sitting there, you know, we'll work for food. And, you know, I've heard a lot of different stories about people that have approached them and said, I don't have any money for you, but I have a job. And the guy says, no way, I didn't really want to work. You know, well, I don't. I don't really care whether that's true or not. It's not about what the other person will do with it. It's about what giving does for me. What giving does for me is it continually makes me mindful that the world is bigger than me. And also the Bible says, he who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Hmm. The Lord will repay him. So when you're giving to the poor, whatever they do with it, that's on them. Yeah. God will take care of you. Mm-hmm. So uh, we don't need to have all the strings attached to the generosity of the things that we do. And, you know, I get requests every week uh, from my friends on Facebook because people see that I'm a minister uh, or that I oversee some churches and I get these, dear servant of God, I am in need here in Pakistan. Well, I, if I were, you know, just independently wealthy, I could do that. But my goodness, I get so many of them. And, you know, are they a scam? They might be. You do have to be careful with scams. But when it comes to giving to an individual, a five or a one or some change or, you know, whatever you got, there's no real risk involved in that as long as you uh, are doing it from a heart of love. And in, without expecting anything in return. Boy, that's a tough one right there, isn't it? Absolutely. That that I think is is more key than the one we just talked about, about uh, what is the person going to do with that money? What's in it for me? Yeah, what's in it for me? And, and it's not just about money either. It, it's just you you mentioned just a moment ago about giving of your, your time and your talent uh, to these Christmas concerts that are coming up. Um, and, and so and then there's another aspect it's kind of off the beaten path at the moment but there's giving and then there's forgiving uh you know forgiving right and uh you know you just hit the nail on the head when we give it's 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 what it does to us and how it makes us feel which we'll get into in just a few minutes but the the same the same thing applies to forgiving when we forgive others, it's not necessarily about the other person and what they're going to do with the mercy or the grace we've just shown them, but it's how it makes us feel. Well, first of all, you have the means to give because somebody gave to you. Mm-hmm. Now, you may say, well, no, I worked for it. Well, that's true. But beyond working, if you believe that we are not the end result ourselves, you know, that we're in a system that is much bigger than us. And if you do believe in God, you believe that there is an original source. I have a scripture I'd like to share, if that's okay with you, Tom. Absolutely. That I think it was really very fitting. Uh, it says, it's in uh, 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 29, and it says that God, who is abundant, will make you generous on all occasions, so that in every situation, you can be generous to others. He who gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater will give you what you need to sow in order that 
that thing that you've sown might do good, but you might also reap the harvest. So it, giving is a, an explosion, really. When you give, uh, you are letting something loose in the atmosphere that is unlike anything else. You're helping the person you give. You're helping yourself. You're glorifying God. It lets loose this cycle of generosity, and generosity is the key to giving. Hmm. Generosity is the key to giving. I like that. Uh, that's wonderful. Uh, giving is an act. Generosity well, is a spirit. Yes. Yes. And tis the season. <laughs> but not just around Christmas time, right? It, right. It, it's a, a daily lifestyle. Uh, of giving. And, and giving, I believe, is, is a principle just like the law of gravity. I think there's a law of giving. Uh, you know, given it shall be given to you, right, as we, we've read in the scriptures. And then there's the law of gravity. What goes up must come down, right? So there, I think that there's, a, there's an actual principle here, as well as a law that if you give, it will come back to you in some measure or form. And uh, a lot of times we're looking for the person we've given to, to reciprocate and give back to us. And that's not the right heart to have. Right. We need to have the heart that we're going to give with no strings attached, as you mentioned earlier, and, and just give from, a heart, from our heart because that is the kind of heart that we should have. I slaughtered that scripture, by the way, is 2 Corinthians 9, <laughs> and verse 9, 10, 11. I knew there was an 11 in there somewhere, and I lost it for a second. But if you'll indulge me, I'll read it. Uh, it says in verse 8, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor and their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. <clears throat> Currency comes from the root word current. So we have a current of electricity running through our homes and into this computer. And if you interrupt that current, you don't have light. You don't have power. But if you get in the flow of that current, it has a beginning point and an ending point and actually has to circle around and go back home. And so that's the picture that we have of currency, of giving, of making its round, of, you know, you get the concept. Selfishness comes from misunderstanding. We, we don't understand what currency is. We don't understand what giving or generosity is. So we hoard it to ourselves. We don't know how it works. That's good. And, and John Maxwell has said, we need to be a, a river, not a reservoir. Oh yeah. So that it's always flowing, as you said, in, in talking about currency and, and all of that, it, it's always flowing. It's we're a conduit where we're, we're been, we've been given to and we give. Uh, I often like to say we're blessed to be a blessing. If a river comes from a spring, an underground spring like an artesian, which is the reference that most uh, wisdom writers use, uh, whether it's the Bible or other books of wisdom, uh, almost all of them refer to uh, life, giving, generosity as a river, and that it comes from a spring or a well that's down deep and doesn't run dry. Uh, certainly, that's the message of Jesus. And so here's the point. If you're a riverbed and you're carrying the water from that spring, you will never be thirsty, even though your purpose is not to quench your own thirst. Hmm. That's good. And, and here's the other thought about it. You know, a reservoir can often get stagnated. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's the purpose of having that fresh yeah. flow of what's going on. So it, it comes to us. And that's not to say we're not supposed to be savers and, and, and make investments and things of that nature and be good stewards of our finances. But it, it does mean that 
it's not all about us and, and yeah. putting our pie in the sky because we're always going to say, I need just a little more and just a little more. Have you ever noticed through your life that we live usually as people, we live beyond our means or we live it up to our means, right? And then when our means gets bigger, we live up to those means mm -hmm. or live over those means instead of just being finding a place where we're finally satisfied with what we've been given. And now we use the surplus to be a blessing to other people. Right. That's right. And uh, it really plays into the third one. Giving makes the world a better place. And we can really talk about three and four together uh, makes the world a better place. And da, 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 light bulb. It comes on makes us feel good mm -hmm. <laughs> giving makes us feel good I, you know i was thinking about this earlier people who are selfish and stingy and hoard to themselves most often are the same people who are critical and judgmental and irritable and don't participate in the common good on any level Selfish people make it all about them, and that is a dead end. I, I keep on thinking about the, the, the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's really all about him and, and me and, and I. I only have the employees that I absolutely need to amass my wealth and, and even those that I absolutely need, I treat poorly uh, because I'm looking out for myself. And there is a great lesson to be learned in that story of Ebenezer Scrooge, um, to learn about the heart of giving. And when we give, it does something in our heart and changes us from the inside out. The good feeling we get from giving is uh, that sounds selfish. It's not a selfish pursuit. It just is an automatic reaction. We, we feel good. And so that's the payoff. If I feel good, I'll probably do it again. So I'm getting this good feeling from being generous. So, hey, I think I'll try that again. And so as long as you're paying your bills, as long as you're putting some money aside for the future, why not give to others? So that, you know, whether you know them, trust them or not, you know, do your homework. If it's a big effort, you know, you know, there's some groups you can trust, like the American Red Cross and uh, Compassion International. There are some groups, you know, you can trust because they're giving is uh, their their work is transparent. Uh, there are some that will exploit you for sure. But can I tell you this? If you give to a scam. You don't know it's a scam, but you gave from generosity. Even though the scam artist spends it for his own selfish purposes, you'll be blessed just the same as if you gave it directly to a person in need. Because the, the whole deal is not about who gets it. It's about who gives it. That's very powerful. I like this quote here. It says, when you make the world better for others, you make the world better for yourself. And this is the one, one of the fundamental parts of the principles of leadership, he says. Uh, so giving makes us feel good, as you said. So let's, let's wrap up uh, these three here. I, you know, this says that there was uh, six points here, but um, for some reason, I'm only seeing four. I don't well, know. Yeah, well, there's three below that are leadership action points in the article. Yeah, so, so look at those, because those are great uh, points for us to highlight. And so number one is, is practice giving without recognition. And we kind of alluded to that earlier, but uh, that, that's powerful when we, uh, again, practice giving without recognition. I, I don't need my name on a plaque. Um, I don't know about you, but we, I've gone into places and it said, uh, you know, so-and-so gave this much to uh, provide this this thing and there's there's okay you know if if the organization is is wanting to recognize someone for their generous giving but it's another when we're expecting them to put our name on a plaque yeah right <laughs> uh for for the purpose of recognition and uh, sometimes it says here serving 
anonymously is a great way to learn how to go beyond simple or simply giving. Anonymous. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so why don't you crack into number two for us? Uh, determine how you can best contribute. Uh, sometimes it's a financial gift, but then as a leader, it costs you really nothing but your own pride to uh, to affirm other people. And really, it doesn't even cost us our pride. It may cost us our pride to forgive someone and to say, I'm sorry because of something we've done. But when we affirm another person, when I say, hey, Bob, you did a great job, and I'm really pleased with the work you do, and I'm proud of you. You've just given that guy enough to carry him till the next payday, because that in and of itself lets him know that he is being recognized. You don't have to be recognized. All you have to do is recognize others. Guess what? They'll recognize you automatically. Mm -hmm. I love working for him because he has always got a kind word to say and generous and makes it a point to, you know, give us raises when we can, when he can, or uh, give us a word of encouragement or tell us how great job we've done. And it's not artificial. Do not flatter people. Flattery is not generosity. Flattery is a lie so that you can get something that you want. But being generous is telling the truth and genuinely helping other people through money, through time, through words, and uh, determining, making a mental calculation of how, how much that you can actually do this. So I remember uh, there's, a, there's a story featured on Dairy Queen, local to the area, not too long ago, where uh, a a person had decided to pay for the person behind them. And then they asked the cashier to ask the person behind them if they would like to pay it forward. And it started a chain of events that happened one after the other. Um, I think they said somewhere in the ballpark of $10,000 over the course of time uh, of the course of like three or four days that people just kept on paying it forward to the next person, to the next person. Mm -hmm. And it was a generous burst of giving uh, that ended up happening and, and it, it made the news. That's uh, very cool. Yeah, very cool. But, you know, you, you mentioned a story uh, in one of the recent podcasts about when you were uh, down and out and your car was broke down, your, your, uh, you needed gas or oil for your, heater in your in your house and and uh i mean you you just needed a helping hand and uh, the policeman showed up as you mentioned and and was a, a help to you and um uh, i i remember a similar si situation well sort of similar and going back to dairy queen as well um there was a a day not too long ago that my wife was feeling really down and she was in the drive through at uh, McDonald's getting her famous Diet Coke. And, um, and the person in front of her paid for her Diet Coke. And it's just a Diet Coke. It's, it's like, what, a dollar or something? But that particular day, it, it made all the difference um, because of how she was feeling and how her day was going. And, uh, and, and so we never know what our giving is going to do to another person, how it's going to impact them. And, and maybe they'll walk away after you've given to them and they'll be ungrateful. But again, it's, that's their problem. What they do with what we've given them is their problem. Them, right, right. Um, but it's about our heart, the posture of our heart. Are we in a mode of giving um, from a cheerful heart? And that's what's going to make all the difference. Um, so the last one here is is uh, number three is give as a family. Uh, have you ever done anything like that as a family, uh, gone out and served or, or, or something along those lines? Yes, we have. Share something maybe that you might have done. Well, in 1995, um, I felt like I wanted to do something in the poorest neighborhood of Detroit, Cass Corridor. I sought approval from the organization that I was ordained with uh, to uh, begin an effort in that area in a, a building that they owned but weren't using. And so uh, we started an outreach called Mercy House. 
And my family became immediately involved as well as many other families. But um, the beauty of it is, is that we would go down on a Saturday, we would clean up the place, we would uh, bring food in and uh, sing some songs, uh, share a word of encouragement, and then people would get in a line and we'd give them food. The thing grew, it went crazy. I mean, the, the people that were helped and blessed, my kids had a chance to watch and to learn and to learn how to be generous and to learn. To, right? People would say to me, aren't you afraid to go down there and take your family? And I said, you know, no, I'm not at all. I'm not really at all because we're we're giving them something. First of all, it's a very poor community. And uh, I had already checked and uh, if there were gangs in the area and the word I'd gotten was, uh, no, there are no gangs because nobody has anything to steal. So don't worry about it. So it was that poor. How about you? There's, I want to shift just slightly because there's a, a, an impactful moment here that, that was more uh, powerful to me. And, and that was this, uh, my, I was, we were downtown Detroit and we just seen a game or something to that effect. And I was walking on the sidewalk uh, with those that went and including my son, Justin. And uh, we came across this gentleman that, that was, you know, requesting a handout. And I, I totally ignored that he was even on the planet um, and, and just walked past him. And um, after I arrived at the car, I, I just felt terrible for two things. One, ignoring this person um, and not even acknowledging that they existed. And number two, that my son witnessed this. And, and so right there in the car, I actually apologized to my son. Um, for the the example and opportunity that I had to to demonstrate a heart of giving, and what I showed him was these people aren't important, and I did not want him to remember that about me. And if I was to ask him about this particular incident, he probably wouldn't even remember. But it resonates with me, and still has to this day. Uh, and and it's 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 a missed moment, but hopefully I made some a little little bit of redemption there. Um, and it wasn't unlike me to <clears throat> to give. I remember I was with my band, and we just got through doing a concert, and we're going down the road, and and I look over, and and God says, uh, "Give that person all the money that you took in tonight for uh, you, you know playing out." I'm like, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so we just kept going down the road, and I just kept it to myself. And the the farther we got away from this person, the more I felt this uh, pain in my stomach. Like you know how we ignore stuff, and it eventually goes away. Right. Well, this wasn't going away, and and so. I said, all right, Billy, you know, turn this car around. We got to go back. And so we went back and I told them all what I was getting ready to do, <laughs> that I was giving away what we were given. And thankfully, they trusted me. So I go, I find this guy. He's in a coffee shop at this point. And I go in there. I say, hey, you don't know me, but I, I, I we're a band and we just got through playing. And, and God spoke to me as we were going down the road and said, you need to give this to this man. And he said, why would you do that? I said, because I just want to be obedient. And he goes, well, I, I don't need money. Look, and he opened his wallet and he had all this money in there. I said, I don't care what you got. I just got to be obedient. So will you please take this? And, and, and so he took it. And so I don't have another side to that story as of yet, uh, all these years later, but it was just being obedient in that process. And, and giving and it had an impact on me as well as uh, my bandmates. Can I end on a story? Absolutely. All right. Um, this is 1985. So a few years ago. Uh, 
And my wife and I were renting a home. We'd started our church. We'd been there about five or six years, and we had found a lovely home to rent. It, it is right across the street from where we live now in the home we own. But it was uh, in the mid 80s. And if you were around in Michigan in the mid 80s, it was not a pleasant place economically. We were just coming off of a huge, huge uh, recession. It was awful. Anyway, I won't go into that, but I will say that uh, I was excited to be in that home. There's a three bedroom, two bath house, excited, lovely place, full basement, big yard, corner lot. We were thrilled, right? And uh, just really excited. The tax laws changed during that season. And the IRS then said, you can't deduct uh, interest on a rental home off of your income tax. So the homeowner came and said, hey, I'm gonna sell the house. <laughs> and it was so hard to find new houses at that point. That's one of the reasons we were so excited about it. We did not have the money for a down payment. We didn't wanna move back into an apartment. We had three kids. We didn't quite know what to do. And um, I, I was uh, like, I'm believing God, this is all gonna work out. And it came to February when we had the pull up stakes and get out of there. And we didn't have another place to go. And I was really irritated. And, uh, but I, I trusted the Lord. God did make a provision and we did uh, move in with a friend who had a nice big house for a little period of time while God arranged for our current house to be built. It was a beautiful story. That's a different one, but here's where I'm going. So that night then I was irritated and I was saying, Lord, why don't you meet my need? You know that I'm just out here doing what you want me to do, pastoring a church. And yes, Lord, I do love you. I am really irritated right now because I had to go get boxes. It was a snowstorm. It was February. I could barely get through it. And I needed boxes. And I didn't want to get boxes. And I didn't want to move. And I didn't want to be out in a snowstorm. And I was grumpy and irritable. And I'm pulling into the mire store and I see this lady all bundled up with all of her groceries. Her arms are full of groceries and she's walking out of the parking lot. And all of a sudden I wasn't even thinking about me anymore. I thought about her immediately. I thought, well, where's that lady going? There's no way that she could get anywhere. It was snowing like crazy, big old ruts in the road. So I stopped and I said, ma'am, I had to call her a couple of times and, and I said, do you want a ride? And I could tell immediately that um, she had some sort of a mental or emotional impairment. And uh, so I said, uh, hop on in and I'll take you where you have to go. I said, where do you live? And she said, I live in Heartland. Well, that's five miles away. She was going to walk five miles in a snowstorm. And I said, well, I'll take you home. So I, I get in a car, I get her in a car, put her groceries in the back. Oh, sliding around a rear wheel drive, getting through the snow. I get down on old US 23. I head north. I'm going to take her to her place. And then it dawns on me, I'm almost on empty. So, and I remember all that I have is $5 in my wallet and some pocket change, like 78 cents or something. And uh, it's late. It's cold. It's snowy. I've made a commitment to help this lady. And I think to myself, well, I'm going to drop her off and go get $5 worth of gas. And I got to her home and I unloaded her groceries, took them inside. And the Lord spoke to me and said, give her that $5. Oh. <laughs> and I wanted to say, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, listen, I said, would you, would you be insulted if I gave you $5? Would you mind to take that from me? And she was very grateful. I got back in the car and I said, well, Lord, you blew that one. That was my only $5. I may not make it home now. And I'm mully grubbing, but I'm grateful because I realized that focus was off me for a minute. And I got a chance to do something good. And of course, I knew better than to be grumpy, but sometimes you're just irritated and you can't help it. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord isn't insulted when you're disappointed. So, you know, he's bigger than that. So I was heading home. And I thought, well, now I could put 78 cents of gas in my car, which is not enough on a cold night. I don't know if my car will start tomorrow. So I pulled in, I get all the way back to Brighton, 
I pulled into a gas station. It was called Bob's Marathon. It was right across the street from the Methodist and the Presbyterian churches right on Grand River. And I pulled in there and I went inside and I knew Bob. I said, Bob, 78 cents. Somebody get 78 cents of gas. He said, what's that all about? I said, it's all I got. He goes, oh, whatever. So I gave him 78 cents and I went out. It was in the days when you had to prepay. So I put the the nozzle on the gas tank, and I'm on. I'm standing in this gas station in the snow and Grand River Avenue. You know, you got four lanes, and I, uh, for some reason, I just look up and I see something on the other side of Grand River. Now, I, I don't know. You can't really see in the snow on Grand River. Something's fluttering around over there, and then I thought, oh, that's nothing. And then it starts to flutter across the street. And it comes across Grand River. Uh, I stop pumping because I'm, I, I'm fixated on this thing that's fluttering. And it flutters over the curb. And it flutters over the gas pump foundation. And it lands on my shoe, a $5 bill. <laughs> and in my heart, I heard the Lord say, What's the deal, man? Get off my case. Here, take your five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I paused the pump. I went inside. I said, Bob, five dollars and seventy-eight cents. And he said, Did you find? I said, Don't worry, don't ask me. I gotta go. So I pumped the gas in and I went home. And I immediately got on my knees and I thanked the Lord that I had a God that would look out for me in the same way that I looked out for this lady, and that everything was gonna work out in the end. And it did, hmm. because while we were moving back and forth from our place there in Northville, living with a friend, while we were, you know, we'd come back into Brighton and drop our daughter off at her friend's house. And one day her friend came out, her friend's dad came out and said, hey, uh, have you guys found a place yet? And we said, no, we're still looking, you know, we're, we feel good about it, you know. And he says, well, why don't you just let me build you a place? <laughs> Hello? Said, what? He <laughs> said, why don't you just let me build you a place? He said, I'll tell you what, I want to do this. If you'll pick out a lot in this neighborhood, I'll buy it and I'll build you a house. And you don't have to give me anything except $700 down. And uh, we'll agree on the price up front and it won't change. You can lease it for five years. And after five years, if you don't want to buy it, just give it back to me. And your rent will be $700 a month. And we'll agree on the price of the house. I mean, it all within 15 minutes, I went from dropping my daughter off to having plans for a new house. <laughs> I picked the lot right across the street where we live now. He built the house. Five years later, I bought it. And we've been here since 1986. Wow. And to God be the glory. Um, I don't always understand. Seldom do I understand the mysterious workings of God. But I do know this. He that gives to the poor lends to the Lord, and God will repay. Mm, that's good. Well, I think we can end on this idea is that there's always an opportunity to give. Um, we just have to be intentional about it. We have to um, notice the things around us. And, and sometimes we're all caught up in our own thing that we don't notice the needs that are right uh, around us, next door, across the street, even the person standing with us in, in an elevator. Um, we've got to be intentional about looking for other people. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't be a bad thing for you to say, all right, God, who do you want me to help today? Um, how can I make a difference in somebody else's life? How can I add value to someone? And, and this is just not about money, everybody. It, it's about giving of our resources, whatever they may be, our time or talent or our uh, finances, uh, what, what, or forgiving, as I said a moment ago. Um, so it's about giving and, um, and giving from a, a, a right heart. And so look, I take the challenge today, even in this season, I think there's a lot of people who are who are desperate and who need a helping hand so that they can make a Christmas bright with their family or whatever the case may be. So um, be intentional this week even about um, adding value to someone by giving to them. 
God bless all of our listeners and viewers. And God bless you, Tom. And Merry Christmas to everybody. And life is good. And give $5 when you can. And watch it blow back across the street and land on your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today to Life, Love, and Leadership. 